<laughs> Hello, this is Blah6. I'm here with Fan and Steel, and we're here for Bethesda's E3 2019 conference. Uh, you guys can uh, hear it, yeah? Hello? <laughs> Uh, can I hear you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear the conference? Uh, yes. Okay, good. So, uh, what do we expect to see at uh, Bethesda's conference this time? Hopefully some more information on Fallout 76. Is... Don't have a gap. On the whole, like, dumpster fire that was Fallout 76. I will admit that the third parties, this the third party cited that, like, the uh, nuclear cola run, the nylon bag, that was a big mess. And they should have had that under control from the start. I see. Anybody else I have anything on the spot? Damn, maybe show us some more about Huh? Okay, okay. Um there there are three things that I'm expecting to see. One more elaboration on stuff we don't know much about, including that space game and possibly more stuff about Elder Scrolls six. With uh, more a little more stuff on Doom Eternal. Two, there will be damage control for Fallout 76, possibly with a, a shadow dropped update coming later tonight. And finally, three, there will be audible booing at some point in this conference. <laughs> yeah, that there's no doubt. Even we'll be able to hear it. <laughs> I do want to make a point. Uh, uh, can I talk about my channel? Like, share, share, just talk to you guys about on the chat here. All right, and we should be seeing something out of it any second now. <laughs> You'd better have punchlines! Okay, but only because you asked! <laughs> I surrender! Enough! You'd better have punchlines! <laughs> I, I did like the fact that Todd Howard kind of... ...about the glitches and stuff. With the phrase, sometimes it doesn't just work. Hmm. Okay, yeah. What? Bye. All right, okay, it's starting. Nine, eight, seven, six, here we go. Four, three, two, one. Disappointment! I'm probably about five seconds ahead of you then. Seriously? 
with a game, there is no game without the players. Really, it all comes down to you. Without you, there is no game. There's no one to play it. No one to you got that right. Ah! You fucking ice cream. <laughs> and we appreciate that. Ugh. I let it out here too long. And through all of it, <laughs> you're always there with us. Damn it. You are definitely not afraid to tell us how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Your feedback sometimes challenges us, but it forces us to be always challenging ourselves. You empathize with us as developers and with each other as a community. It's really beautiful. I'm Dinga Bakaba. And I used to take a week off every time a Bethesda game came out. My name is Mark Diaz, and when I was eight years old, I used to sneak over to my buddy's house to play Doom. I'm Rush Lambert. Daggerfall was one of the very first games that got me into the Elder Scrolls world. I'm Dana Christo, and I started out as a 16-year-old gamer who just wanted to bring joy to others through video games. And now I'm game director at Arkane Studios. Now I'm a game programmer at id Software. Now I get to be a part of building that world as the creative director on Elder Scrolls Online. Now I'm a UI programmer at Bethesda Game Studios. <laughs> anything I could have dreamed of. I see you. I see you. I see you. We see you. Because we are you. And together. 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 We are all. 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 Middle finger to you all. All right, here, how far, like, where your stream is at and where I'm at. Are we finally synced up? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, we, good. I think when you said little finger to you all was when they said we're all the best and that big crowd. Wait, wait, wait. I know one thing that would be even funnier than a lot of booing. This, the place is like half empty. I stand corrected. <laughs> Please welcome Bethesda's Senior Global Vice President of Marketing, Pete Hines. How are you? Feel good? Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Thank everyone watching around the world for tuning in to watch our fifth annual E3 showcase. He's looking like, oh god, I'm going to disappoint everybody here. Dedicated to those who love games, who love the incredible entertainment that games provide. This past year, you fought demons on Mars and Nazis in America. You were assassins in the Empire, adventurers in Tamriel, and survivors. A lot of us. And survivors in the Wasteland. Wow, that was actually some cheering. And you've embarked on these amazing adventures on PC, console, VR, mobile, or wherever and however you choose to play. And that's the key. You take the worlds that we create and you make them yours. You share your experiences with other players, with friends, and with family. With our games, you've built large global communities that truly matter. This year, we want to give special recognition to the extraordinary Bethesda community. As you showed, as you saw in our opening video, you mean everything to us. I've almost been at this company for 20 years. And when I first started... I'm, I'm a big of Bethesda. 
When I first started, one of my first responsibilities was moderating the community forums, chatting with you and keeping you up to date on our games. It was a great way to start my career at Bethesda because it was the perfect reminder of why we do what we do. And like so many others at Bethesda, I've spent a lot of time with you at events around the world. I've enjoyed meeting so many of you and getting your thoughts and feedback. So tonight, we'll be taking time throughout the show to hear directly from some of you in the Bethesda community. We are thrilled tonight to show our fans the lineup of great games we've been creating just for you, including the premiere of some exciting new games, and we'll go deep on Doom Eternal. Okay, we're right about the first thing. So, if you're ready, let's kick it off and to get an update from our friends at one of the most celebrated development studios in the world, Bethesda Game Studios. Please welcome studio head and my good friend, Todd Howard. Oh, here we go. How oh, joy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. 76 was a disaster. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see everybody. We have had an incredibly exciting year at Bethesda Game Studios. Given some of that excitement, impressed you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Actually, over the last year, we've had over 60 million players in our games, our most ever. And it's all of you. <laughs> It's all of you who have made these worlds what they are. Take Fallout 76. Oh. A type of game we'd never done before. Had a lot of difficulties at launch. And we got a lot of well-deserved criticism. But the team kept working on it, and you kept playing it. And through all of that, something amazing has happened. It's thanks to all of you. This game has one of the best online communities we've ever seen. We made a post-apocalyptic survival game where you can do whatever you want, and everybody's nice to each other. <laughs> they don't go on killing griefing sprees. They leave food and water for the newbies and wave to each other. I don't know about you, this should give us all hope for humanity when the apocalypse does come. To you. And we have a lot more in store this year for Fallout 76. But first, our latest game, The Elder Scrolls Blades, is in early access. And thanks to all of you, it became our second straight number one mobile game after Fallout Shelter. Absolutely incredible. And to tell you what's coming to Blades, let me introduce project leader Craig Lafferty and art director Matt Carafano. I do like a little bit of self-awareness about 76's launch and everything. It's great to be here at E3. And yeah. thanks again to all of you. It's appreciated. Blades number one. As someone who's worked on the Elder Scrolls for 20 years, it's been incredible to bring this world to your phones in an all-new way. We still love those classic dungeon crawlers, and it's clear you do as well. And whether you're exploring a dungeon or rebuilding your town, it's great to be able to do it wherever you are. Since it's E3, we're releasing our biggest update yet, featuring all-new jobs and solo arena battles, an all-new custom jewelry system, and a brand new dragon quest line. Yeah. It has even more, but best of all, it's coming out tonight. So, man, I kind of should have stayed for this. Tonight and give it a try. <laughs> and we're also hard at work on our arena mode for this fall that will feature PvP your own guilds, and visiting your friends' towns. But most exciting this year, we're also bringing Blades to an all-new platform, Switchblades. 
Oh, there. Ah, uh, 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 funny. Ah, uh, fucking funny. Well, at the very least, it's a Switch game. Appreciate that. Yeah. It'll probably do better on Switch now. Yeah. Yes, Blades is coming this fall to the Nintendo Switch, and yes, it's still free. <laughs> Blades is the perfect fit for the Switch. You can play on the go, on your TV, and with motion controls. But best of all, it's cross-play and cross-progression with the mobile version. So you can... So you can start tonight on mobile, and all your progress will carry over. <laughs> And it's playable here at E3 in our booth and Nintendo's. Yeah. You know, the guys you probably want to see more than us. And for those of you playing on mobile, we also have some special rewards for both our Apple and Google players this week. So download tonight and let us know what you think. Thanks again. <laughs> Now, let me introduce Jeff and Tom to tell you what's coming to Fallout 76. <clears throat> All right, okay, what do you got for us? <laughs> Hi, I'm project leader Jeff Gardner. Yeah. And I'm co-studio director Tom Mustaine. On behalf of everyone at Bethesda Game Studios, we want to thank the millions of you who have played with us stuck with us, and helped shape the world of Fallout 76. Absolutely. It's incredible what the game has become. You've told us how much you've loved this year's updates so far, from camp building, legendary weapons, player vending, and of course, the dreaded Sheep Squatch. <laughs> We've also been working on our biggest update yet. It's called Wastelanders, and it will fundamentally change the game. It's been some time since Vault 76 opened its door, and we all discovered that Appalachia isn't quite what it used to be. We encountered a lot of things, overcame a lot of things. I don't think any of us expected for people to actually come back. Are you from that vault? Can you help people! Me? We've traveled pretty far. People! People! Folk rebuilding, fighting back. We'll fight. Soylent Green is people! I can't help it, I'm sorry. We've been everywhere. Seen I have not seen a person in Fallout since Fallout 4. You got to claim the wasteland before it claims you. The question is, are you with us or with them? Human NPCs new main quest, uh, new gear, choices and consequences. Fucking finally. That's right, that's right. Human NPCs are coming to Fallout 76. Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! I know, I know, right? Not just NPCs, but a full quest line, new rewards, and as you saw, full dialogue trees. This is a long-term story we're telling. Year one was about the vault doors opening and all of you settling the wasteland. Hello? Year two is about people coming okay, to I, I got you. claim it. Like previous okay, Fallout good, games, good, good, these good, characters good. have their own stories and goals. It's up to you to choose how to interact with them and live with those characters. Thank fucking God! The Wastelanders update is coming <clears throat> this fall and will be free for all Fallout Okay, never mind. Players. It's fall. The update is fall. 
And I'm like, thank fucking God. And in the spirit of free, we're doing something special just for E3. Fallout 76 is going to have a free trial for everyone starting tomorrow. <laughs> well, I did say the game would go oh, yeah. free. I just didn't predict that it would be That's temporary. Perfect time to see what <laughs> Fallout 76 and its growing community Maybe have become. We can't wait to welcome all of you. To and Apple because Richard. so many of you are going to be joining us, we thought we'd also give you a sneak peek this week at an all-new game mode. Check it out. Let's hope it's private servers. Your first test was making it to the vault. What? Now, your real trial begins. Currently, there is no overseer of Vault 51. Oh, fuck yeah! You will be the one. We can be an overseer! We are in serious need of... We can make our own vault! Yay! Like vault? Yeah, like vaults, a vault shelter, except better. So I have devised a unique process of elimination. For Vault 88 from Fallout 4. But... A battle to the death is the only sure way to judge the superior candidate. This no, this is a battle royale. Interesting. Fucking... Whoa, what the You're fuck? Right. You might need to avoid this. What? Hey. It's gonna have wastelanders with this shit. Oh yeah, battle royale. Ha <laughs> ha. Fuck yeah, we put a battle royale in Fallout 76. That's right. Nuclear winner is a battle royale born from the Fallout universe. From power armor to perk cards, from camp building to contending with wasteland creatures. It's not a and great of course, my, edition, my jackass. Nukes. It's, it's not a great what? Three addition to an already huge game. Sorry, what? I couldn't hear it. And he, we think said, you will he said it was a great thing. addition to an already Remember, great game. It's not a great addition. A battle royale winter is free is to try this week lazy. on all platforms. <laughs> A addiction to a game that I've ever been playing. I see. So jump in tomorrow. We can't wait to see you. Thanks again. So no notes on private servers. Great. And nothing on increased stash boxes. Great. Remember, everything we've talked about that's coming this year is free. We get to represent hundreds of passionate developers across four studio locations in North America working on multiple projects. Yes, we're still hard at work on our next-gen RPGs, Starfield, and of course, Elder Scrolls VI. We know how precious these game worlds are to all of you, and they are to us. We know the time you spend in them is important. Keep telling us what you love, what you'd like to see us do better. Thank you again, everybody, for your support. But really, even more so, I want to thank everybody for believing in us. Thank you. And that's it. Goodbye, everybody. Welcome the founder of Tango Yeah, Awards, yeah it really Mr. just seemed Shinji like it did. Mikami. Honestly, I would have been impressed. Like, uh... That's basically it. Goodbye. They would have had a lot of balls to do that. Yep. 
ありがとうございます。I'd like to start by greeting my team in Tokyo. It's Monday morning there, but they are watching. みんなおはようございます。今日は真面目にやるよ。ムー、ウィアブー。Yeah, the、Man. one Japanese fan in the background. I am excited to announce the next game from Tango. Ghost Wire Tokyo. <laughs> It is an action adventure game in which you will fight paranormal enemy and rid the city of supernatural evil. It's basically Ghostbusters. Japanese style. Well, that guy shut up. <laughs> to tell you more about Ghostwire Tokyo, here is creative director at Tango, Ikumi Nakamura. <laughs> And such a, such a big stage makes me nervous. I'll do my best to speak in English. <laughs> We are rooting for you. Kind of, sort of, but not really.、Uh, we are making a new kind of action adventure game. To be honest, I don't think there's any Bethesda CD. But not the survival horror game that we are known for. People are vanishing in Tokyo. You must find out why. You will encounter conspiracies and the horror. You have to, you have to explore the world, face challenges to uncover the truth and save humanity. In the game, you will meet spirits,、ah, some dangerous, some peaceful. <laughs> My stream just started loading. That each have their own okay, stories. Okay, it's back. You will need to ask yourself: Is this normal or paranormal? I ask myself this question every time I go to the office. <laughs> yeah, considering it's Bethesda, I would not put it past you. We are very excited. Let's take a look. Meet you next. Thank you. Bye bye. And then. Okay, now I'm behind. Nice. That's okay. This game's not really、thing. important. Oh no! Thanos strikes again! <laughs> Literally, look! <laughs> It's 50% of the entire world is gone! Alright. Look! Thanos strikes again! I might rewatch it after a while, so you might rewatch the conference. That's okay.、Um, you should probably、uh, make sure your internet's okay after this. Um. <laughs> Miso soup. The ramen. Oh no! It's how to train your dragon. Don't fear the unknown. Attack it. Wham wham wham. Now what do we got? 
All right, come on, give me some. When I'm not playing Bethesda games, I work as a mechanical engineer. I work in a hospital. I used to work with kids. Uh, I'm an electrician. I'm an event planner. In real life, I'm a systems administrator. Program assistant for a private school for children with autism. I'm trying to be an artist. This will probably be the last time I'll be a part of. Make like back end systems that it, it's it's really boring. <laughs> Maybe permanently or temporarily, I'm a full time streamer. I got a I got a YouTube channel. I make my own yarn. I'm a social worker teaching uh, inmates. I'm a game developer working at a video game cafe. I've been a Doom fan since the game came out. I remember being in the eighth grade and uh, a buddy of mine giving me the shareware demo on you know, three and a half inch floppy disks. So on. My older brother picked up Fallout 3 and I took his copy and played it when he wasn't home. Fallout 4, oh my gosh, that's like my baby. The scope of that game was just like a lot bigger than things I was used to. Just setting foot in Shimmering, the first city that you go to in Somerset, it was amazing. <clears throat> you would look out and you'd be like, oh, I want to go there. And then you could go there, which was wild. Go out into the world, go in any direction that you want to go. Out. The exploration and the weirdness and the alienness of it. I played Oblivion. I, I tell you, it probably saved my life. It was one of my first experiences with a fantasy world that was that Immersive. Love the dragons. Scatter the dragons. If you take down a dragon, you can definitely take down any illness. Don't ever stop adding dragons to your game. Add dragons to Fallout. Add dragons to Rage. Add dragons to everything. Add Necro dragons to Doom. Dragons. Now, more dragons. Dragons, dragons, dragons everywhere. Please welcome studio director at Zenimax Online Studios, Matt Fyroar. About. Thanks. Th thank you, everyone. Wow. Thank you. Yeah! And <laughs> I just want to—I just want to shout out to our friend Greg there, the one in the video that really loves dragons. I'm happy to say, Greg, the Elder Scrolls Online has dragons. Yeah! <laughs> Right now, in fact, players are deep into the season of the dragon, our year-long story about greed, revenge, cat people, and, of course, dragons. Yeah! Dragon! Tonight's focus on the community resonates with me and everyone at ZeniMax Online Studios. Dragon! Literally would not exist without you. <laughs> Watching you play the game, streaming, yeah. telling stories, hearing your feedback, we understand that you are the most important part of the world of Tamriel. Thank you. Thank you for making ESO the extraordinary adventure it is today. The past year has been a huge success for ESO. More Game of the Year awards, millions more players have joined. So, so many, in fact, that we recently, so many, in fact, that we recently added more server capacity just to support all the new players in Tamriel. <laughs> ESO, ESO just keeps getting bigger and better. Just a few days ago, we launched the Elder Scrolls Online <laughs> elsewhere. The latest chapter. <laughs> Would you shut up? The latest chapter in the game where you're able yeah, to visit I'm, I'm for the to... first time the homeland of the Khajiit, as well as control the dead, is the new Necromancer class. And if if you haven't played it yet. Elsewhere is the perfect starting point for new players. Yeah! When we announced Season of the Dragon, we kicked it off by showing you a video about how dragons were unleashed on Elsewhere, and we ended with a cliffhanger. Now, I'm really excited to show you what happens next. Check out the world premiere.
And this is why I can't wait to live alone. <laughs> Just gotta talk with your parents. Yeah, he says I'm being too loud. Except this time the defeat. Yeah, we're being glad that the cat person is dying. Aw, I wanted cat guts. Recognize the return of Sai Sahan, yeah! the legendary Red Guard Swordmaster. He's the legendary Red Guard Swordmaster you met as part of the original Five Companions. He's back as the leader of the Dragon Guard, a group, a, a group of dragon hunting warriors you've seen in other Elder Scrolls games. He'll be featured in our fourth quarter story DLC named Dragonhold, which will complete the season of the Dragon. We've got a lot more to share about the return of Sai and the Dragon Guard, which will unveil at QuakeCon later this summer. Do you guys get the feeling that those guys that are screaming are getting paid Before by Bethesda? Then, keep an eye out for a dungeon DLC adventure called Scalebreaker, which you'll see in August. Thank you so much for your support of the Elder Scrolls Online. We're humbled by your enthusiasm. Did you just your mention that? Your enthusiasm for the game motivates the guys us every day. Might be you guys are seriously awesome. Thank you. Of, yeah. I could be doing that ironically. But, That's I have something else to talk about. Too. The Elder Scrolls Online isn't the only game in development at ZeniMax Online Studios. We have several other projects, one of which we're ready to reveal tonight. And to tell Ooh, us all game. about it is the game's creative director, Kira Schlitt. Hi, everyone. And now 
for something completely different. Imagine a classic something Saturday morning different. cartoon in free-to-play mobile game form. Let's take a look. The hell? Oh, come on, Commander Keen! Wow, that's a very big throwback. Wait, 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 wait. What is this game? Yeah. It was like before Wolfenstein, right? Wait, this was before Wolfenstein? Spot. That is a, this is like on the wow. That, that, I didn't see that coming. Like, oh, no, yeah, me neither. So there's a new branch on Commander Keen's family tree, and they're heading to iOS and Android. If you're hearing about Commander Keen for the first time, it was one of the first PC action games created by id Software in the early, early 90s. 90s. Yeah. <laughs> it starred yeah, this boy like genius Billy Blaze, <laughs> whose alter ego Commander Keen protected Earth. All of us at Zenimax Online Studios want to give a really big thanks to our friends at id for trusting us to deliver our modern take on this classic game. <laughs> So, tonight, as we introduce Commander Keen to a new generation of players, we're also introducing the next generation of heroes. Meet Billy. And Billy. Twin geniuses who follow in their famous father's da, 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 da. The new commanders are, of course, funny and powerful, but the game is also full of enemies, allies, and some really bad, bad guys. The twins build wacky gadgets from household items to save the Earth from certain alien destruction, drag and drop gadgets to summon allies, attack enemies, and move through the environment. Choose from a caboodle of contraptions to conquer challenges. And try saying that five times fast. The twins go on adventures in story mode, which tell some of the classic Commander Keen tales, as well as a whole bunch of brand new ones. In story mode, you'll overcome aliens, collect power-ups, and explore Mars and beyond. You can also go helmet to helmet with other players in battle mode, a real-time head-to-head race through an alien landscape where you need to control checkpoints and claim the flag to gain ultimate victory. Commander Keen will soft launch this summer on iOS and Android phones. <laughs> I gotta admit, I did not see that coming. <clears throat> so, please go visit gokeen.com to pre register to receive unique in game rewards and hot Commander Keen launch updates. We really can't wait to kick I'm some on... asteroid with you all. Thanks. For that. <laughs> Thank you, Kira. Uh, hey. At Bethesda, we, like you, love mobile games. In addition to Blades and the upcoming Commander Keen, millions of you have enjoyed Fallout Shelter, which has now reached over 150 million downloads and counting. For fans of collectible card games, we brought the Elder Scrolls Legends to mobile so you could experience the Elder Scrolls in a new way. This year, the Legends community has continued to grow <clears throat> thanks to a lot of upgrades, new features, and new content. It's a great experience for a night of gaming or a quick match over a cup of coffee. Oh. <laughs> This guy can be expected. 
a fucking King Arthur's Court. I'm back. Yeah, you're back. I can hear you. Hello? Hello? Here we are. Oh, jeez. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. It's blah. Dragons. <laughs> if you enjoy other My card games but are looking like for something a that has a little deeper just... challenge, you can download Legends for free on the App Store and begin oh, playing. Still like a thousand. Legends' next expansion, Moons of Elsewhere, will be available on June 27th for PC, Mac, mobile, and tablet. You can head over to BethesdaNet to get a glimpse at the new cards and content, or play it this week in our booth. See. I'll see you there, <laughs> clapping. <laughs> Now, speaking of new content, three weeks ago, we released Rage 2, and now Insanity Rules... <laughs> and now Insanity Rules for millions of players around the world. But we wanted to do more than just deliver a critically acclaimed open-world shooter. We've already added community challenges that reward you just for having fun in the wasteland, and we've got a lot more planned with new features rolling out this week. The world of Rage 2 will become even more unpredictable and even more insane. Take a look. Look all around at this destructibility when Sam wins the red barrel drop on we God fucking damn it. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Introducing Sam with the best worst beats day of the beast. <laughs> Now it's lagging for me! Is your lagginess contagious, Steel? I don't know! Oh. That's my next tattoo. New shit dropping weekly. <laughs> Next. Oh yeah, Wolfenstein. Here we go. Machine games. All right, next. <laughs> and then finish on Doom, I guess. Hello, everyone. 
After liberating America from the Nazi scum in Wolfenstein II, the new Colossus, this year we take you back to Europe with two new Wolfenstein games. First, we are bringing Nazi killing into virtual reality with with Wolfenstein Cyberpilot. As a hacker working for the French resistance, you will take control of Nazi war machines and turn them against their creators. Cyberpilot will be available this July, and it's playable this week in our E3 booth. No, I want to Wolfenstein Youngblood. If you haven't fought Nazis in VR, you don't know what you are missing. Wolfenstein Youngblood. But, as I said, we have two I haven't finished. new Wolfenstein games. This summer, we are going to be launching Wolfenstein really the Youngblood. Game. Those are some epic With a games. gameplay experience that is bigger than any previous Wolfenstein game. You will have more weapons and weapon upgrades than ever before, more ways to customize your playstyle, and, of course, even more evil Nazis to kill. And in Youngblood, you can kill those Nazis with a friend. Yes, Wolfenstein is going co-op. Youngblood is set in the 1980s, two decades after the new Colossus. B.J. Blazkowicz is missing in Nazi-occupied Paris, and it's up to his twin daughters, Jess and Soph, to track him down. In Youngblood, you can still play by yourself, or you can partner with a pal to double up on shooting, stabbing, and killing Nazis. Check it out. Paris, Nazi country. That's where Papa is, so that's where we're going. We can find him together. I may have an assignment suitable for two Nazi killers such as yourselves. This July. Wolfenstein Youngblood releases on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC on July 26th. Oh, so it's simultaneous for Switch as well. Uh, and if you can't wait, stop by our E-Free booth to play this week. Thank you. Which is getting some love. And now, I'd like to welcome to the stage my dear friends from Arcane Lyon, 
who worked with us on these two Wolfenstein games, Dinga and Sebastian. Are we going to get this on our three? Probably not. We love you too. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dinga Bakaba and game director at Arcane Lyon. Bonsoir, I'm Sebastian Miton, art director in the same studio. <laughs> so, along with partnering with our good friends at Machine Games on Wolfenstein, we've been working on other projects at Arcane Lyon. And tonight, we're excited to announce our latest first-person action game. It's something innovative, stylish, and different from anything we've done before. Let me begin by saying bienvenue to the frozen island of Black Reef. This is a place of mystery where looks can kill. The game takes place during what we say in French is a period of folie. A time of madness. And now that we've given you a small taste of the world, let us introduce you to our two deadly rivals, Colt and Julian. This place is in a paradise. It's a prison. Out here, Out here we're trapped. We're free. In this endless, eternal cycle. Nowhere to run to, baby. Life's purpose is on this island. And I can't let this go on any longer. The more days I repeat, the longer that I'm out here, the more <clears throat> certain I am of what I have to do. The only way to protect the cycle, the only way to break this cycle, is, is to, to kill, kill you. you. Oh, Blade! That's what this is. Wait, Blade? What? This. Yeah, this is a Blade video game. Because I heard rumors about this. The dude Blade. Need a time. Is on my as soon as I saw the main character, I knew. It's Deathloop! Uh, have not. <laughs> De <laughs> Deathloop combines a mind-bending story with meticulously designed levels and of course arcane signature <laughs> gameplay that lets you approach every situation any way you like. Because in the endless clash between these two extraordinary assassins, how you play is up to you. Plus, I think it's really fucking cool! <laughs> Excuse my French. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no. Maybe you should have said that in French, actually. Maybe, maybe not. Well, if it had to be a conference, I'd rather it be Bethesda than any other. It's a wonderful way to get away from all the pressures in life. <laughs> I think the sense of community has really helped yeah, me as a person because I'm typically very isolated. It's not really speaking my interest too much after Fallout. But I gotta yeah, admit, the damage to Fallout so far has been okay. Well, why did I have in real life? 
the games that you um, bring out just helps people, honestly. My parents were refugees from the Vietnam War, which is why I'm also fascinated by elements of war. Playing these games just kind of put me out of the worry and the stress. I was in a dark place. I'm probably going to definitely need to get do a lot of cuts while, with this uh, conference. Either anymore. And so now the only dark places that I'm allowed to go are in Dungeons and ESO. Just being someone who is LGBT, yeah. it's nice to be able to see Well, I, I wouldn't say like uh, like, like making a highlight video, video, more so just uh, cutting past all the fucking uh, sort of yeah, 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 yeah. on me as a player. And I just really admire Maybe it would be better if I just made a highlight video for this one, I don't know. Big worlds with these amazing stories. Yeah. I'll think about it. Welcome back to the stage. Blah, 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 blah. Building these fantastic worlds and telling these stories comes from a passion to deliver the very best experiences for our players. Hi, I'm James Altman, director of publishing at Bethesda. Oh. It's Duffy! And I'm Robert Duffy, chief technology officer at id Software. It's time for Doom! Tonight we have some exciting new technology to sh show you that can dramatically improve gaming from millions. So for the past two decades, we've approached game development not by looking at what is possible today, but with a vision of what can be possible tomorrow. And at Bethesda, we're proud of our legacy of innovation, where again and again we've changed the industry. We were the first to use physics-based engines for sports games. We were groundbreakers with Go Anywhere, Do Anything, Open World RPGs. We are the inventors of the first person shooter, which is now the world's most popular form of gaming. Sadly. Yep. We are pioneers in downloadable content and the first to bring mods to consoles. And actually, since we first brought mods to consoles in 2016, there have been one billion mod downloads for Fallout and Skyrim. We, of course, developed the first commercially viable VR technology revealed in our E3 booth in 2012. Yes, that is the original VR headset held together by tape and worn by our very own Tim Willits. And, of course, we are well known as developers of best-in-class engine technology with our id Tech engine. In a, in, Innovation and creativity is in our DNA, and all of these advances were done with one goal in mind, to improve player experiences. So tonight, we have exciting new technology to Just get to the point. We're going to show you the result of years of research and development. Cutting edge game engine based technology blah, blah, developed blah. specifically for game streams. Uh. I'd like to introduce you to Orion. Orion! Orion is a tremendous breakthrough in streaming technology. It is our name for a group of patented technologies that optimize game <sighs> engines for performance in a cloud environment. Orion can work with any game engine and will improve player experiences no matter which game you're playing or whether you're streaming on Stadia, on xCloud, or another streaming platform. So, how does Orion work? The exciting game streaming services you've been hearing so much about have largely focused on hardware solutions to address the complex challenges of streaming. There's a lot of words. <laughs> uh, we used our expertise in developing game engine software and took a different approach. By incorporating Orion technology at the game engine level, we're able to stream game content up to 20% faster per frame, leading to a dramatic reduction in latency. In addition, an Orion-enabled game can stream with up to 40% lower bandwidth. And happily, for game developers, Orion technology is easy to integrate with your game build with our SDK. What does that mean for you? It means that streaming games will be faster and better with Orion. And Orion substantially reduces the cost of streaming for players and for publishers. So it won't matter if your friends and family are sucking up all the bandwidth or if you live far away from a data center. With Orion, you'll still be able to stream your game at max settings.
Wait over promise, Bethesda. Wait over promise. Now, as with any new computer technology, one, mass, one must ask the question, can it play Doom? Good question. Can it stream an unrelenting, fluid, first-person shooter with native 4K resolution at 60 frames per second? Let's see. I'd like to introduce... I'd like to introduce Shale Williams, tech specialist for Mid Software, who is showing you just that here live on stage. So Shale is streaming an Orion enabled Doom oh, stream right your now mobile? on mobile device. As you can see, there is no reduction in visual fidelity. <laughs> That's Doom at 60 frames per second without perceptible latency. And we want you all to experience this powerful streaming technology yourself as, as we test and refine it. So for a chance to be among the first in the world to stream Doom 2016 for free, all you need to do is join the Doom Slayers Club by registering at slayersclub.com tonight. <laughs> Everybody could use a little more Doom in their lives. And we'll see you in hell. Oh, yeah. Here we go. What do you interfere with now is bigger than you can imagine. Yeah, I knew they were going to do something with Doom. It's Doom Eternal, bitches. End of end E3 last year with Doom? No, 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 no. They didn't end it with Doom. They didn't end it with Doom. They ended it with Skyrim. I mean, Elder Scrolls 6. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Then, because I, I haven't heard anything about the game after They are no longer your people to save. I gotta admit, Doom has some kick-ass music. I really liked uh, Doom 2016. I recently completed it. Yeah, I need to finish it, but yeah, that's one of those games that once the music... You start getting off. You do get it on. Release date. It has. This is awesome. Thank oh, it's going to so, come out so much. Uh, I'm Marty Stratton, the executive producer of Doom Eternal. And I'm... Thank you. And I'm Hugo Martin, the game's creative director. As you just saw, <coughs> we're not just building a world for Doom. It's an entire universe. Earth is on the brink of annihilation. It's being consumed by demons. And your crusade to save it will take you across dimensions to locations never seen before in Doom, from heaven and hell to the Sentinel homeworld and beyond. Yeah. There is so much to see and discover, but Doom is first and foremost about gameplay. This was actually and the Doom original Eternal concept promises to be Doom the ultimate for... power base. The fun comes from mastering the experience because you are the Doom Slayer, the strongest, fastest demon killer in existence, and nothing can stand in your way. Absolutely. Of course, the challenge in Doom is all about handcrafted combat, but also engaging level design. 
And in Doom Eternal, the game always has something to new to throw at you, even deep into the campaign. Where did you live through a town like in Alabama? A one up? Why would we need a one up? Oh god. <laughs> okay, there it goes. so important to us at id software that every aspect of the gameplay has real meaning to you the player every enemy is different every weapon has a purpose and every decision you make really counts the only path to victory in doom eternal is to aggressively control the fight with amazing agility powerful guns and critical resources that's right i'll tell you we absolutely can't wait for you to play it and some of you won't have to wait too long. If you are lucky enough to be in the room tonight, yeah. <laughs> you'll have a chance to play it immediately following the show. <laughs> and for those not here but at E3 this week, We'll have Doom Eternal playable in the Bethesda booth all week. Yeah. But enough talk. Let's see how it all comes together. And watch as this perfect killing machine goes to work. <laughs> I'm liking all the new options I see.
Yeah. Me likey. Yeah, from what I'm saying, it's very fast. I just. Wow. I'm looking very forward to playing this. Oh, yeah. Because I can't hear the music that's playing in the background. I... What do you mean you can't hear the music in the background? in my head. Well, I hear the audio from the game. It just I I can't hear like any music or anything like. Really? I'm just listening to that. They're coming. Yeah, it's very quiet for me. Oh, okay, that's probably why. I see. How about now? How about now? Thanks. <laughs> All right. That was classic. Uh, yeah, th that was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> We're so excited because the gameplay that you just saw is just a piece of what you're going to play this week at E3. Yeah. But I bet a lot of you are wondering, when do we get to play Doom Eternal at our home? Well... You don't have to wait too much longer. Not quite tomorrow. <laughs> but Doom Eternal will release on November 22nd. Interesting. They chose a similar date to follow up to me. We're very excited about that. Perfect so for Black Friday. Really special for Doom fans. Yep. An amazing collector's yeah. edition we're really proud of. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's an actual helmet. Yeah, we, you, you should wear, you should wear that thing. <laughs> that's what somebody's actually wearing in the crowd. This guy's already got it. That's right. Already a badass. He's, he's already got one on. <laughs> All right, well, we've got one more thing we know that you've been waiting to hear about. Our totally new Doom multiplayer experience. We call it Battle Mode. We've been developing this in-house at id, and it's unlike anything you've played before. Yeah, we've been so pumped at id to share this with you. This is pure Doom, but with your friends, where two player-controlled demons take on one fully loaded slayer in a fight to the death. This is a first person fighter where it's demon strategy versus slayer skill. You know, we can't wait because we know you'll love the different play styles of the various demons because each has unique movement, attacks, and abilities. They can even spawn AI demons to control the battlefield and help you take down the slayer. It's strategic, competitive, and it's a ton of fun. And we can't wait to share more details with you this year at QuakeCon. That's right, a lot more to share at QuakeCon. But before we go, we do want to take a first look at Doom Eternal's new multiplayer. On behalf of our amazing team at ID in Dallas and Frankfurt, Germany, we want to thank you all so much for your support. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Fight. Demon health critical. Slayer health critical. 
Slayer killed. Round two. For fuck's sake! Of all the goddamn times for to fucking do this. <laughs> and for a game I actually want to play. Come on, damn it. You piece of shit! Come on! Oh my... Okay, there we go. Until then, go to Bethesda.net for more info... Okay, thank God it was just about quick. I don't give a shit. Here E3 this week, we'll have hands-on with many of our games, so be sure to stop by our booth. In the meantime, thanks for playing, thanks for watching, and thanks to all of you for being part of the Bethesda community. Have a great night. Came back to the tail end, huh? <laughs> At Bethesda, yeah, we're in the business of creating doing. heroes. But the true hero... Fucking better not have. They promised the goddamn space game. It's like we hand you this malleable clay and you do these extraordinary things that we never could have imagined. We get to build these Bob. What? These worlds and these communities and you all come in and you play and you bring <laughs> these worlds that we create to life. You help us build richer worlds. Like that error or something with like something that we play. You add meaning to everything what do you mean? we do. We're glad you're here. We're so glad you're here. To the heroes. To the heroes. So badly that they have to readjust their, like, play announcement schedule. And I feel like maybe there's something with Starfield that they didn't, like, something came out in the programming that grew that. Uh, original plan, and they couldn't really talk about it at all. Was that it? That better not have been it. And that was it! That was even Good. more... That was even more uh, disappointing than fucking Microsoft. GG, Bethesda, G. I mean, wow. That was fucking horrendous. Yeah. I mean, they said, like, at the beginning, they, want, they were going to talk about Starfield. As well as Elder Scrolls 6. But they didn't. Fucking lies. I can already tell you right now. Yeah, it's, it's just, wow, I am. They could have at the very least shown a teaser of Star whatever the fuck it was, because they barely showed it last year at all. Because I think they were just starting work. I don't know, it's just... Ugh. Oh, I just want to finish this up. Doom Eternal looked good. Everything else looks like shit. Five out of... No, wait. No, not five. Uh, three out of ten. Okay, Wastelanders. The Wastelanders update looked impressive. Uh, Wasteland... Okay, okay. Um. All right. Yeah, yeah. Still a three. 
Uh, okay, maybe a four. I don't know. Three or four. I don't fucking yeah. know. I don't fucking care. Yeah, I'm pissed now. Okay, okay. Wastelander, for me, Wastelanders was a good addition, fix, but it was immediately ruined by the nuclear winter update that they're going to be, the Battle Royale update they're going to release. Still no private servers. Um, Still no stash box doubling or whatever. That really interested me besides the Tokyo Wire and Doom Eternal. Yeah, for me, it's another... Like, this one probably was one of the lower t tiers, like a 5 out of 10 for me. This is that's easily a 3 in the worst of, conference so far. No, that's actually more critical than most of my Bethesda interest in conferences. Last year would have probably been like a 7 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, um, all right. I... I, I yeah. Uh, okay. So I. Does. All right. So I need to go to the. Ba but I don't. I just. It was longer than Microsoft's, I think. No, there's not much that were interesting. It was longer than Microsoft's I had conference, I think. Like ten, twelve, maybe. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh, all right. All right. Uh, I need to go to the bathroom. Um, uh, fan. Uh, do you got anything else to say? Not really. Okay. Uh so yeah, that uh so yeah. Um that was shit and I'm gonna take a piss. This is Blah Six. Shadow Steel. Here's hoping PC uh here's hoping PC Ubisoft and Square tomorrow will be better. Uh -huh.